This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God. Read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 4, this is Section 1. Delving into Form and Content, Part 3. Now let's look at pleasure. Pleasure seems to feel good, really good. (laughs) The body's pleasure seems to be a really big deal. Whether it is favorite foods, certain kinds of sexual activities, or beautiful places like the mountains or the ocean. There are temperature preferences. Some like it hot, some like it cool. The ego uses the body for pleasure. Metaphysically, why does that keep you so constrained and limited and feeling so guilty? The five senses are part of the ego's way of gratifying itself by making the body seem real. Just try and get in touch with God when you have a throbbing headache. Pain powerfully reinforces frailty and guilt. It seems to be a very powerful witness. The opposite of, I am as God created me. It seems to be a witness to weakness frailty and powerlessness. Pain is a very powerful witness for the ego. It is the ego saying, You have screwed up. You have left your creator and he is angry and this is a form of punishment. You are feeling pain because you think that God is angry at you. You are feeling pain because you believe that God is punitive. The flip side of pain is pleasure. In the moment of orgasm and ecstasy, some people scream out, Oh God! I do not think this is exactly what A Course in Miracles is talking about. (laughs) It is not exactly a feeling of detachment. Pleasure, being the flip side of pain, reinforces the belief that I am a body. Not only am I a body, I am feeling pleasure in this particular spot in my body. When you are having your favorite cup of coffee or looking at your favorite painting, it seems to be that there is a physical or psychological sensation. It is not uncomfortable and it is not painful. It seems to be different. The Course is saying, My child, you are hallucinating. Your mind is twisted and you think you can tell the difference between pleasure and pain. Jesus is telling you that you are in such a distorted, twisted state of mind that you are seeing what does not even exist. You are hallucinating. These sensations you are feeling are not the real world. They are not the state of heaven. Both ends of the spectrum reinforce the belief that the body is real. Yet, to the one who sends forth miracles to bless the world, a tiny stab of pain, a little worldly pleasure, and the throes of death itself are but a single sound, a call for healing, and a plaintive cry for help 
within a world of misery. It is their sameness that the miracle attests. Text chapter 27, section 6 How many times do we ask for forgiveness when we are experiencing pleasure? You are dreaming a dream and you believe that there are good dreams and bad dreams. I would say that most of us put the pleasurable dreams in the good dreams category. In fact, we spend a lifetime pursuing them. Why would we chase after huge careers and climb corporate ladders unless it was for money? Money can be exchanged for a lot of the menus of the world. You get your visa card and the world is your oyster. The flip side is the belief that there are certain dreams that are better than others. Later in the text, he says that the miracle overlooks all dreams. Thus, it is the miracle doer. Thus, it is the miracle does not select some dreams to leave untouched by its beneficence. You cannot dream some dreams and wake from some, for you are either sleeping or awake. And dreaming goes with only one of these. The dreams you think you would like would hold you back as much as those in which the fear is seen. For every dream is but a dream of fear, no matter what the form it seems to take. Text chapter 29, section 4 Friend, I have a question that goes back to the use of the body. If we look at the three things that are the ego's purpose for the body, pleasure, pride and attack, and imagine a scenario for a moment where we wipe out all of those. What would we have left? David, what you are asking is, if you begin to withdraw from the world and really start to give up these uses, what is it that you will be doing? The world is a hallucination. When you withdraw your investment from the hallucination, the hallucination fades and fades and fades until you wake up to your eternal reality. The phrase, the dreamer of the dream, refers to when you step back far enough to be detached. There will still seem to be things that are going on Jesus is a good example as he certainly seemed to have a mission to be traveling places and doing things, but the mind reaches a point of detachment. Friend, how do I practice seeing the hallucination throughout my daily life? David we know that repression and indulgence are two sides of the same coin. Anyone who has been in any kind of addiction knows how hard it is and can be to control one's behavior. Obviously, the ego is in on that. The ego is what is driving it. The other side of the coin would be repression, where you deny yourself that chocolate ice cream that sex or whatever. With both, you are trying to change the form, the behavior, and hoping that the mind will follow suit. But the mind is what needs to be changed. The mind has to change first. Then the behavior automatically follows suit. This is what a miracle is. It is painful to approach the course from the backwards way of looking at all the things the ego is doing, 
and say to yourself, This is my specialness and I have to let it all go. It is very difficult to let go of specialness when it is your focus. Friend, it becomes sacrifice. David, Jesus calls it fighting against sin. In the I need to do nothing section, he says that many have spent lifetimes battling against sin. It is extremely difficult to reach atonement by fighting against sin. The answer is to focus on the purpose, on the forgiveness, or healing, or whatever word is comfortable for you. Carry that with you into your everyday activities. Hold that purpose out in front. In the setting the goal section, the steps are laid out for putting your goal out front. Do that and just watch how everything seems to bear witness to your goal because your mind is very powerful. Hold your goal out in front. Do it right now as you are sitting here. Watch your reactions. Remember, they are based on your interpretations of what seems to be happening. It is always your own lesson. The proper use of judgment is to use it to watch your feelings. How do I feel? Am I peaceful or am I upset? It does not seem to matter too much what the upset is. It is about noticing how you feel. This makes it a very practical course. You get many opportunities to practice forgiveness when you hold your goal out front. Everything becomes a backdrop. You can apply the lessons in every circumstance. You will begin more and more to see that the specifics are not important. The deceived mind believes in specifics. Everything in this world is specific. There is nothing outside of the mind. In the beginning, the mind cannot quite conceive of that. It is too big of a belief. I can tell you from my own life, when I first began going to course groups, I was looking at the girls, at their legs and other body parts. And then I would bring my mind back. You notice your eyes and your mind. Your eyes get drawn to this and that. But there comes a change when you hold your purpose out front. When you start connecting with the higher self, you begin to really want to connect with people. Instead of telling your eyes not to look here or there, you just start to really want those heart-to-heart connections. There is an automatic shift that takes place. When you are totally focused on your purpose, You just stop paying attention to the body. You stop paying attention to how many people show up or how many women there are. You do not notice weight, looks or race. Racism is not in the world. Racism is in the mind. The ego makes a big deal about all the specifics like color, age, attractiveness and gender. That is where sexism, ageism and racism come in. It is a phenomenal idea to think there is no racism in the world. The only place that racism could be is in my mind. 
End of section.